Sometimes some people have to sacrifice themselves so that the others can go on with their lives in peace. Remember, if I didn't have savior complex, then you and I wouldn't be here, looking at each other's eyes with fear. Except we're not. But imagine, imagine that we are. Imagine that you are a woman named after a pretty and delicate flower like Poppy. The sun is out, you're at the zoo you go to more often than any normal person does. Must be your special connection to nature. You cut through the overwhelming crowd of families to find your favorite spot next to the tortoise enclosure. You whip out your sketchbook and start drawing the visitors because you are the main character. The sun once your friend turns against you and now even your butt cheeks aren't safe from the salty droplets. The sun is not sorry for doing this to you but you should have thought of that before dyeing your hair red as if to steal the spotlight from her. You desperately need water but walking to the water fountain a few feet away from you seems like too much of a hassle so you just decide to sit there and suffer in silence. At least you're not alone though, because a himbo with glossy black curls holding balloons in his hands interrupts you. Men do that a lot to you. You're just so hot that you can't even go to your dorm room at the campus without thirsty interactions. Art students are all sluts. He informs you that the water fountain is broken. He offers to bring you some water himself, not that he fancies you or anything, it's because he would get in trouble if you passed out from the heat when he was there as a witness. You nod your head in agreement. Not that you fancy him or anything, it's because you don't want to incriminate him. Okay, fine, can't have you losing your job because I keeled over, I guess. Well, I'm glad I'm preferable to sunstroke. You like this guy, Sebastian. He's charming, he's nice. The guy at the snack bar owes him a favor, so he's gonna get you your water for free. Sebastian's a cheap bitch. And you're a horny one, because are you really about to walk over to the snack bar when you were lazy to walk over to the water fountain a few feet away from you even before you knew it was broken? Dude, come on, man. Sebastian, who the fuck is this? Sebastian's friend acts like a snapping turtle as soon as he sees you. Is it the zoo messing with his head? They both used to work at a circus, maybe he's still in character. Who knows, but you might not get your water for free after all. Keen, this is Poppy. Poppy, this is the ill-mannered friend I evidently spoke too highly of. Keen, chill, will you? I promised her a bottle of water because it's hot outside, that's all. Poppy's an art student. She was sketching in the sun and the fountain was broken. You drink your water while Keen is eyeing you like he wishes to drown you in it. Well, mission accomplished. Nice to meet you, Poppy, but I need to get back to work. Seb, I need to talk to you about... Scheduling. Sounds fake, but okay. Sebastian leads you outside with apologetic whispers. You're heartbroken. Bitches get stitches, I told you this would happen. The next morning you wake up and just like a studious student, you sit at your desk and start working on your assignment. You're supposed to draw a model with stern eyes. Even though your mind is stuck on Sebastian's luscious curls, your fingers would disagree because the man on the paper looking up at you right now is Keen. I'm really not sure which part of him you were ogling at yesterday, but you seem to just can't get his nose right, so you decide to make your way to the zoo once again. Not that you fancy him or anything, it's, it's because you just really love school. You go straight to the food trailer. He's not thrilled to see you there. Can I help you? I was looking for Sebastian actually, have you seen him? Oh, and a bottle of water, please. 150, and no, I haven't. Next. Well, that went better than I expected. You're still alive and breathing. You suspect there's something more going on between Sebastian and Keen. You feel guilty about breaking up a loving couple because you're humble and the main character. We, we, can't, we can't have you acting like an asshole. It's not good for the brand. You're named after a flower for fuck's sake. As you're drawing the furious face of Keen, you hear the sound of balloons rubbing each other and squeaking next to your ear. You just got caught sketching a dude's boyfriend. Might as well get the name of that circus they used to work at and start your job as a clown right away. Or you and Sebastian could go hand in hand because he's not much better than you. 
flirting with a woman when his boyfriend is just right where he can see you? You know damn well you're pretty, Sebastian. I don't know if that routine works on other girls, but the bashful act won't fly with me. Oh, so the artist thinks I'm pretty, does she? Well, I'll have you know I can appreciate a work of art too. And red just so happens to be my favorite color. And how does Keen feel about your art appreciation? Are you guys dating or what? I mean, yes, well, well we do what I've seen on Ballard. Sebastian so nonchalantly dropping the name of a very popular porn site gives you whiplash. You should see what people do on that website with a whip slash. After you learn that they seem to be in a situationship, if not a relationship, you advise Sebastian to figure it out or King could get really hurt. Sebastian thinks it's a good idea, but before he leaves you, he asks if you do drawings for money. Yeah, sure, you're a student, of course you like money. He offers to pay 500 bucks for a painting that would only be for Sebastian and Keen's eyes. You say yes immediately, wondering if any whips will be involved. But I guess until Friday, you won't get to find out. It's not that easy, of course. I mean, if I was offered to paint a not safe for work portrait of two hunks, I would be distracted too. I could be so lost in my thoughts that I might even confuse the naked model in my figure sketching class with one of them. In your case, it's not confusion though, because that naked model sitting on that chair in the middle of that room is in fact keen. And the color of your cheeks could steal anyone's attention from the red of your hair. Just like you stole the attention from Sun. But sorry, she's just really upset about it. I don't know why. This is of course a smarty story, so you both find yourselves alone in a storage room. Keen, what the actual hell are you doing here? You come and bother me at my job. I figured I'd return a favor. Why is there a problem, Poppy? You just spent the last two hours staring at me naked. Seems a little disingenuous to blush now. Yes, when you were a model, Keen. Did you really come here to, to, to stalk me or something? Is this about Sebastian? It is about Sebastian, as a matter of fact. He's mine, Poppy. And I'd really appreciate it if you would just stop flirting with him. Well, fine, but I didn't approach him. You know, he was the one that's been hating on me. Hell, I was the one that pumped the brakes by asking what was going on with the two of you. I'm not interested in coming between anyone. Keen, I'm sorry if I did. Surprising to all of us, Keen is understanding. He looks at you like he's genuinely sorry for acting like a douche canoe, but he's curious why you were sketching them, and he's also curious if you're still down for the commission after his attitude towards you. That's when you realize you misunderstood everything. They don't want you to paint them naked, sad. They want you to draw sigils for them, confused. But suddenly you realize that it doesn't even matter what they want you to do for them in the future because right now, the only thing Keen looks like he wants is you. By the looks of it, you want him too. You bring him down with you onto the floor. You get out of your pants at a record time. Keen takes your face in his hands and begs you, begs you to share your breath with him. Keen Stone is sweetly pleading, the voice of a man on the edge of utterly losing it. You just think it's a kink or something. You do as he asked and breathe into him with your next kiss. But psych, it's not a kink. That man is a balloon. A balloon. And he needed air to inflate his rubber dick so that he can fuck you. So, story time. Sebastian and Keen are actually, technically, biologically, balloon animals. They used to float around a circus until the owner, a woman named Xena, turned them into human men to make them be her playthings. She used them both as sex slaves, and during that time, they fell in love with each other. One day, they escaped, but they're still not free because until they get the necessary sigils drawn soon, they're gonna go back to their original form. Even worse, their old master, Xena, is probably on their ass and they're gonna be caught any minute now, and that's not nice. Good news is, turns out Poppy is a tulpa master. Wikipedia's definition goes like this. Tulpa is a concept originally from Tibetan Buddhism and found in later traditions of mysticism and the paranormal of a materialized being or thought form 
typically in human form, that is created through spiritual practice and intense concentration. That means nothing to my shrimp brain, so what I gathered is basically tulpas are imaginary friends, and tulpamancers are the mentally ill bitches who will them into existence because they're lonely and toxic. Bad news is, this is an omega verse romance, so there are like multiple scenes where someone's like, Alpha, your omega is distressed growl for her and it's like do we need that also the alphas are the rubber boys and omega is poppy which is weird to me considering they're not shit without her so how does that make sense i thought alphas were like the top tier and omegas were like just kind of like sex toys oh and also like can two alphas mingle with each other i thought they didn't because then why would omegas be special at all but sebastian and keen are fucking like bunnies so if you can get an Omega Wars professional here, that would be really nice. Anyway, when Poppy and King were having sex, right, they bit each other and bonded and nodded and whatever those words mean. And now they're both in heat. When they go back to Sebastian, they also mark him and proceed to have sex for days in a nest, which is like a special fluffy spot they make with like blankets and pillows and stuff to fuck in which sounds really cozy to be honest with you, I can't really hate that. Interestingly enough though, we pass through those scenes pretty fast, there's like no graphic sex scene being described really. We're just told some tidbits of what went down, like they enter her in the same hall together once. <laughs> if you're wondering how that's possible, it's because apparently, uh, just like she can give air to them, to inflate their dicks, they can, she can also like take air from them. So she can adjust their pee pee size. She can also shape them to her liking. Like she can add little bubbles for her satisfaction. <laughs> They're also colored. Like Sebastian's pee pee is red. Keen's pee pee is purple. They also smell sweet and taste like caramel everywhere. Eventually, when they're just like in the midst of fucking, their safe haven does get interrupted by Xena, and Poppy does what Poppy knows best and kisses her, bisexual queen, blowing helium into her system, and she turns into a fucking balloon and floats away into the sky. Which is kind of poetic, you know, considering what she did to the rubber boys. The ending is insanely rushed though, like this whole thing happens in two short sentences and that's it. They're all free, there's no fight scene, there's no dialogue between Xena and Poppy, Xena doesn't even open her mouth. It all just happens in two sentences and the novella ends. I mean it is a pretty short book, like 50 pages or something, so I wasn't expecting a whole lot, but I wasn't expecting this little either. I'm only complaining because I wanted to know more, by the way. Because it, it was fun and just cheesy and fucking weird. You know, there are colorful inflatable dicks that taste like caramel in this book. What more can a girl want? Let me be. Other people must have complained as well that the author Vera Valentine wrote a sequel to it. I read that one too. It's not even a sequel really. It's again about 50 pages. This time we follow a clown plushy turned human in the circus. This time he's not a sex slave. To Zena though he's just a slave. He makes money for her. The book takes place after the rubber boys escape, but before Xena finds them, so it's like a different POV. The clown dude, I forgot his name, but he's like really cute, he's got no pee pee, and <laughs> he watches a porn channel one night after running away from Xena with his human friend from the circus, and he gets these tingles in his body, but there's like nothing there, and he doesn't understand what's going on, he's just so confused, and it's kind of cute, but also just so sad. <laughs> I cried. I cried. Don't, don't, don't come for me. But I did cry. Then he um, eventually finds Sebastian, Keen, and Poppy because Topa Mancer and all Topas kind of recognize each other by their smells. And turns out his human friend from the circus is actually Poppy's cousin, which, you know, I don't, it's just there. It's like a little detail that's there. It didn't have to be there, but it's just there. Then they accept him into their little fuckness, you know, Poppy blows air into his mouth and an orange pee-pee appears. <laughs> and then Xena finds them and gets turned into a balloon by Poppy. It's really weird, especially because that dude wasn't there in the first book. Like, we're meant to just go along with it. It's really clown shit. 
The author notes that she wrote it because the readers found the ending to be really short and anticlimactic, like the battle of Poppy and Xena that didn't happen. But girl, it's still short, man. There's still no battle. First it was two sentences, now it's six. You know what I'm saying? We read about this clown for what? Kind of disappointing. Again, I'm only hating because I wanted to learn more. It's a very wacky plot, but I'm into that. I'm not apologizing. I'm even saying that this could have been way more insane and it would have been totally fine. Like, I wish the author just fully committed to the weirdness of it all. It's a smart book too, but even the smart is short, so you're just left wanting more of everything. Because here's the thing, this dynamic, this dominant woman with a soft boy and a, you know, bad boy, like, this dynamic is really cheesy, but it works, okay? The world building is interesting enough to keep things going, and like I said, man, colorful inflatable dicks that taste like caramel. Okay, that's kind of cool, like, you gotta admit that's kind of cool. I just, w I just wish that published authors were as daring as AO3 authors because you know who cares who cares just just write the goddamn book full send it who cares we're all gonna die one day anyway sorry for making you all do the nasty with a couple of balloons but hey you were not complaining last time I talked so whatever it was an experience and that's what I offer on this channel I think you know by now that you should never trust me with your safety because I always lie when I say this is a safe space. It's not. I'm here to both humor you and scar you if I can. Also, an additional sorry for ghosting y'all. The rot had taketh me into its warm embrace. And it was warm. So I didn't want to leave. But more videos coming soon, hopefully. Thanks for tuning in to my madness every time. I love that shit. Take care of yourselves. And I just hope that from now on, um, every time you see a balloon instead of Pennywise, I come to your mind. And then I come on.